I am making a video game that has a different story each time you play it. And in this first episode, I'm gonna figure out how the heck this is even going to be possible. But before we get into all that jazz, you and I are gonna play a little game. I'm gonna say a phrase, and then I want you to think of the first video game that pops into your head. And I'll give you two seconds to think. Ready? Procedural generation. Okay, time's up. I'm willing to bet that you immediately thought of Minecraft. Because one, it has very large procedurally generated worlds, and two, it's the most popular game of all time. If you did end up thinking of something else, I can almost guarantee it has some sort of worlds that are different than other worlds. Like No Man's Sky, Terraria, Spelunky, the list goes on. We usually associate procedural generation just with procedural terrain generation, where we randomly make physical worlds. But procedural generation can also refer to sound effects, textures, and pretty much everything else that you can make with a couple random numbers and a special function. So hypothetically speaking, we could create a procedurally generated story. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what I'm gonna spend the next however long it's gonna take trying to do. But first, I need a plan. And if you've been watching this channel since, well, day one, you know that me and planning don't really get along too well. The whole reason this channel even exists is to document my progress on my open world survival game. Being an overconfident 16 year old, I just winged it and hoped for the best. And two months later, I realized I was in way over my head and just a tiny bit of planning would make me realize that before I wasted two months of my life. Very shortly after I bailed on that open world game, I started up my 3D puzzle game. And because I was older and wiser, I started planning for about four months. Doing that, let me start working on the game with a very detailed and strict plan, which turned out to be way too ambitious for me, resulting in me ditching the plan and pretty much coming up with stuff on the fly. Now that even more time has passed and I'm legally an adult, therefore incapable of making any wrong choice at all, I'm feeling pretty optimistic about this game's pre-production phase. Pretty much the first thing I actually did for this game is to stop calling it this game. By coming up with a title, or better yet, an acting title, you can feel much more connected to your project and the acting title for this game is The Unwritten Tales from the Apocalypse. I like this one a lot, but it is kind of a mouthful. So I'm not 100% sure that that's what the actual title will be. And if you have other suggestions for a title, or realistically anything at all for this whole game, you can leave a comment or just reach out to me on social media. Links will be in the description. Cool, so let's get brainstorming. This is like the very first phase I went through for the game, and in it, I basically just threw down every single idea I could think about that I would like and wouldn't be too ambitious for me to make. I also wrote down some inspiration I had from games that already exist with concepts that I would like to adapt and put into this one. And overall, I just had fun with capturing what I wanted the game to be like. I knew I wanted the game to have random stories, which from here on out, I'm gonna be referring to as procedural narratives, but I wasn't exactly sure how they were gonna work. The one thing I was certain about is that it would be a nightmare to make all of the procedural narratives be able to take place in different types of worlds. Like, one minute you're in medieval times, and the next minute you're in a spaceship fighting off aliens. So a lot of stuff in the world will be procedurally generated, but the actual world will remain constant. And just judging by the title, The Unwritten Tales from the Apocalypse, you probably have some sort of idea on what the setting for the game will be. It will be a post-apocalyptic United States of America. At first, I really wanted the apocalypse to be zombies, so I asked you guys in the YouTube community page what you thought about zombies, and it turns out most of you don't really like them. So I eventually thought about a different type of apocalypse that is much more relevant to modern day America. Aliens. With that said, I will be setting the unwritten tales from the apocalypse in a world where aliens are actively terraforming Earth and the surviving humans are competing with each other for very limited resources. I also came up with some ideas on how the procedural narrative would actually work, but I do want to make sure it actually works before I share my very detailed method with you guys, so expect that in the next episode. Wow, Will, this feature seems awesome. It'll allow for so much replayability and I bet it would go great with a giant, massive, open world 3D, procedurally generated terrain with complex, advanced AI so you can make different types of models and characters and oh my goodness, this is gonna be the best thing in the world. <laughs> yeah, 
I wouldn't get your hopes up too high. Even making a traditional top-down 2D game would most likely be way too ambitious because by implementing the procedural narrative, I would have to make sprites for pretty much every single thing imaginable because you never know what will be needed for the story. I just don't see a way that a game like that could even be possible, especially just for one person like me, which is why this game will be a text-based RPG. So your character won't be physically walking around an open world, which is kind of a bummer, but I saw no other way of doing this without just dropping my procedural narrative idea. And at the end of the day, I want this game to be unique. So now that I have some ideas brainstormed, it's time to move on to the next stage of pre-production, getting organized. So I'll be starting something which still gives me a little bit of good old PTSD to this day, a game design document. Traditionally, game design documents are long, like hundreds of pages long where literally everything about the game is documented in an organized manner. And for my 3D puzzle game, I spent months making one, only for me to abandon everything in it. A much better approach, for indies like me at least, is to make a much smaller game design document with only the core ideas on there, and have the document change and evolve over the course of development. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, because that would be super boring, but I will go through a couple key sections. Design pillars are essentially your foundation for the game. There's no specific amount you need, but you do want to have more than one at least. The design pillars for the unwritten tales from the apocalypse are procedural narrative, RPG, permadeath, and casual. We already talked about the procedural narrative and RPG, but I haven't mentioned the other two yet. Permadeath is a concept that everyone on Earth should be familiar with at least, because that's the game mode we play real life in. When you die, you're dead. There's no respawning, that's it because the game will have so many different stories to tell, I want the player to experience this variety. And if they just stick to one character constantly respawning, they'll never even see what makes the game unique. Casual just means you don't have to be an epic gamer that can 360 no-scope people from across the map in order to be good at the game. And while you're playing, you can also just pause, take a break, read a book, go outside, touch some grass, and then return whenever you want. I also have a bunch of sections on the actual game. I'm not gonna go into detail on really any of the sections, but they were a typical play session, systems and mechanics, the world, procedural narrative generation, progression, user interface, music, and sound effects. Arguably the most important part of this game design document goes into the process on how I'm gonna be making the game. Massive traditional GDDs are good if you're following a waterfall development approach. That's where everything happens in stages. Like first all the mechanics are made, then all the art is made, then all the levels are designed, then the music, then the sound effects, etc. Waterfall does sound good on paper, but you know, so does communism. And in reality, it's just way too rigid and can't really change if part of the game doesn't end up the way you want it to. A better approach, and the one I'm gonna be using for developing Unwritten Tales from the Apocalypse, is agile development, which focuses more on rapid prototyping and iteration. And after each prototype, I'll realistically be doing some sort of playtest, which basically means I'll show it to people and see what they think. And speaking of playtesting, if you would be interested in playtesting some potential prototypes in the future, reach out to me on social media. Link's in the description. I currently don't have anything to show yet, but around the time next episode comes out, I'll probably have something. If you've never heard of the concept of an elevator pitch, it's basically a 30 second summary of your game. So you have something to say if you ever ran into some super rich person on an elevator, which happens just as much as you'd expect, but it is a fun little exercise to do. Oh, and for dramatic effect, I'll be reading it like a movie trailer. Following the collapse of civilizations, aliens have begun terraforming Earth, leading to countless new threats for the remaining humans to endure. This brutal world is the setting for the unwritten tales from the apocalypse, and it also just happens to be the only constant. In this text-based RPG, your character will go on a procedurally generated adventure, giving the unwritten tales from the apocalypse a unique story every time you play it. With the game not requiring any skill, it will be for the casual gamer and available on mobile and PC. To stay updated on the development, check out the YouTube channel Will Hess for devlogs on how the game is coming together. Thanks for watching. See you soon.